Okay. Hello. I wanted to go through the process of writing our general purpose and proposition together in a more condensed way. So you've just learned a little bit about the general purpose, that idea of to um, persuade, right? It's our most broad purpose that we can do for this speech. Narrowing that down, we now are going to be utilizing a new term. So when we speak in persuasion, we are no longer using the word like specific purpose or the central idea, this unifying element. Instead, we call it our proposition. And a proposition is how every persuasive speech is going to be written. But for us to understand how these propositions are in fact written, it's important to like really just kind of get a general idea about like the word and how it is utilized and how it's really utilized in our society. If we think about propositions, and you've probably heard this term before, you've heard propositions more than likely in the political realm. Every four years, every two years, we have voting opportunities in the United States. Every four years in specific, we have an opportunity to vote on these larger policies, then they are in fact called you know, propositions. They are going to either address a current issue in society that potentially um, is going on and they want to make change to it. So we put on a proposition, um, like for example, you know, a proposition to build a high speed train from San Francisco to Los Angeles because there's so many commuters, it could help with the environment, et cetera, et cetera, right? We propose that we put on the ballot, like I think that was like Prop 1 decades ago. These propositions, what they are designed to do are they are what essentially you want your audience to agree with. So for example, when my um, now husband, the Chad, proposed to me, he got down on one knee and he hoped that I would say no, no. When he got down one on one knee to propose, he got down with the intention and hope that I would say yes. And that is the key, is that all of you are going to be writing a proposition, and your proposition is what you want your audience to say yes to at the end of this speech. So because propositions of policy are designed to um, urge the audience to take action either immediately or passively on a topic, our proposition is going to urge them to, in fact, take that action. This proposition is going to assert the policy that we want them to be, in fact, taking on or agreeing to by the time we come to the end of the speech. So I'm going to share with you my screen, and this will look familiar to you because it is the start of your outline. You'll remember that you had the same format for your informative speech, where we put our proper MLA heading at the top. We have our header with our last name and our page number, and then we make a space for an eventual catchy title to our persuasive speech. Now for this week, your assignment is going to be to come up with your general purpose and your proposition. You'll be writing those and submitting those to the discussion board. If you recall, however, next week, don't you forget about this proposition because your thesis statement is a combination of your proposition and main points. The great news is that the main points for a proposition of policy speech are really simple once we get that proposition written. So let's figure out how to do that. So our general purpose, most broad purpose, all you are going to do here is write two things, to persuade. And when we develop our proposition, we do the same thing, bring down those first two words, to persuade. And now we start to work with our formula. So last time we know that we're persuading, but what are we going to do to whom and with what? Well, let's figure that out. So to persuade, the next thing we're going to do is add on something new here, my audience. Before you had the term my audience, and it was relating to addressing that audience that is in fact in front of you, your fellow college students or whomever you are talking to. Now, in this case for persuasion, 
remember, we talked about that audience and we thought, well, who in fact can take action on the specific topic that we want them to do? You know, to persuade my audience to drink eight glasses of water a day, everybody in the audience can do that. You could probably just say my audience. But if it's in fact like to persuade my audience to, um, let's see, put in more parking at Santa Monica College, your audience probably isn't responsible for being able to build new parking. However, your audience can in fact advocate for new parking because it's an issue. Um, but if you wanted to address the actual audience who can in fact make a difference, then what we do here is we can simply replace that audience with the actual audience. So to persuade uh, SMC board of trustees to, right? And now we have a specific audience that we are tailoring to. Now, the important part about picking an audience and picking an action, whether it's passive or whether it's active, all has to do with the solutions that you are going to be presenting to your audience. Now, this is a persuasive speech. And if you want them to take action on something, then you're going to need to give them ways to, in fact, take action. And like, you're going to need to tell them what to do. So you're going to want to have a plan before you ever really get into writing your entire thesis, making sure that your action that policy and those uh, audience, those two matching up is going to easily lead to that third part of you coming up with some practical like solutions and ways for individuals to go about in enacting that policy. So like I said before, what we'll want to do here is you're going to put your chosen audience and then what else do we want to do? Now, before when we were talking in informative speaking, our formula was, you know, to inform my audience. And then we use the word about. However, in persuasion, to persuade my audience about, does that make sense? I cannot persuade anybody about anything. I can simply persuade somebody to do something or that they should do something, but I can only inform about something. So making sure that you do not have the word about will assist you in making sure that you have, in fact, an active policy, one that is uh, a proposition that will work. So your chosen audience. And so I would use the words either to or that, right? Those are definitive words, more concrete words, and will suggest that the next words are actions that they should, should not, right? So these could be the different types of ways that you say it, right? And then we could say something like not drink and drive. And now I know what my in fact policy is. So to persuade my audience to not, right, we could just say it that way, to not drink and drive or that they should not drink and drive. Either of those are going to be clear that you want them to make that active choice and take that action the next time that perhaps they are in fact drinking, right? And so if you can, and let me go ahead and put here policy. So if you know that you're talking about like recycling plastics, if you're talking about uh, reducing your meat consumption, listening to the music while you study, um, chewing gum for test taking uh, recall, Whatever those policies are, are fantastic. I just want you to keep in mind your audience and then the specific should, should not, and what you are asserting for them to do. So hopefully this helps you a little bit more in writing your own policies as you go forward. Um, but all you are going to need to do for this assignment is come up with your own proposition and general purpose. So again, to remember, to persuade. And if it's going to say like my audience, you know, and we can do something perchance even in the future to um, 
vote for Joe Biden in the next presidential election. There we go, because we have our general purpose. We have our specific audience that we know. We know what the specific action is, right? Two, you've used that word, which is great. And now we have the specific action or the policy, vote for Joe Biden. Um, you can, of course, put any other thing in here, it's a candidate, and it will still work in that way. So hopefully this makes some sense to each of you um, going forward writing, and I look forward to seeing them.